Hey, welcome to a new tutorial based on the intro of the House of the Dragon. Today I'm going to explain the method I followed to make the blood simulations using the Flip Fluids add-on. We will see how to configure the domain, the objects and some forces to get a similar look to the original. This scene has the same objects as the previous one. There is a link in the description. You obviously need to have Flip Fluids installed I have version 1.5. I divided the animation into three different scenes with three cameras which I've linked to the timeline. Selecting each one of them, markers, link camera to marker. Within the city collection I've created different collections, one per scene and another one common. And I've created keyframes to the objects to activate and deactivate them in the process. We also have a collection with the cave which I'm going to disable for now for convenience. And finally we have the FF Objects collection, which will contain all the objects that we use in the simulations, also divided by scenes. I've created a default cube, renamed it to FF Domain, and keyed its position and scale to finish scene. We select FF Domain on the sidebar of the 3D view and click on Create Domain. Flip Fluids creates another collection with the same name and contains a link to our domain in FF objects. And flip meshes collection with an object that will be the final geometry of our fluid. For now we are going to leave the default settings and we are going to prepare the obstacles. We want our fluid to go down the tower, so duplicate the tower and put it in the first scene collection. We disable city collection, enter edit mode, press Ctrl I to invert the selection and delete the vertices. Click on Edge Selection, select these edges, extrude on its Y-axis and exit Edit Mode. I prefer to fill the geometry using a Boolean Modify on the tower and a new cube. Then we apply it and go into Edit Mode again. We press A to select all the phases, go to Mesh, Clean, Merge by Distance and give it 0 0.03 in distance. We exit edit mode, click on obstacle in the sidebar section and it automatically creates a link in flip fluids of our obstacle. If we see the original intro and look at the object that acts as a mirror, in some scenes you can see its shape. And a mirror is only geometry. We can animate the position, rotation and scale. So the first thing that comes to mind is the shape. As examples, we have this icosphere, which I have animated very basically. The fluid that will interact with the obstacle will come out of it, but we wanted to stick to the obstacle so we could change the direction of gravity. And it could work, but of course, there are shots that just using gravity wouldn't work, at least in this way. We select a meter 2 and click on Inflow in Sidebar in Add Object section. We select the obstacle in the Dynamic Properties tab, we change Friction to 0.5, this will make the fluid slow down while they are in contact. Let's configure our domain a bit and do a quick simulation to see what we have. Select the domain, expand more bake settings and change end frame to 199. A little further down in save states, we change from 50 to 24. Now every 24 simulated frames will create a raster point. This is not necessary, but it is advisable once we simulate with the final resolution or if we change some parameter of the simulation. In resolution, we are going to give it 130 for now to see how the fluid behaves. And in grid info, we can see the size and resolution of our simulation, having special attention to voxel size value. Right now, each voxel is 6.6 .6 cm, a low resolution, but enough to have a preview. We're going to collapse Flip Fluid Simulation and we're going to drag Cache and Work tabs to the top since these are the tabs we'll be using the most. Okay, now comes one of the most important parts, the data it saves from the simulation. Organization is the key, so we're going to tell Flip Fluids where to store that data. Click on the folder and create within a project a folder called FF Cache. We go in and create another one called FF Sync one we go in and select it, we expand simulation tab again and click on bake. Effectively, gravity causes the fluid to fall. First, we're going to change obstacle to friction to 0.8. Now we need to reset previous bake and bake again. 
It stays pretty close to the wall, but continues to fall to the gravity. So we are going to use force fields to shape our fluid. We can apply force fields to both geometries and curves, but we're gonna go with curves. We select scene one collection, create a new curve, enter edit mode, select all the vertices and delete them. Select draw tool, select surface, draw a line similar to the mirror animation and exit edit mode. We go to Object Data Properties, Geometry, Bevel, and make the curve a bit more visible by changing depth to 0.1. This does not affect the simulation, but it makes it easier for us to visually locate the curves. We rename it to FFSCN1FO01, and in Dynamic Properties we add Flip Fluid Force. The mode is automatically set to Curve Guide Force, and without changing anything we are going to simulate the game. So reset and bake. The first thing is that I see too much fluid, and in order to reduce it, we can scale the emitter in the X and Z axis. The emitter doesn't move well along the curve, so let's change the emitter animation to match it a bit better. And gravity makes it fall very quickly, so we are going to activate viscosity in our domain, in Flip Fluid's world, and set 1 to base value. We reset, we bake again, and this is a cool start. Too slimy, but let's leave it for now and change the force field's flow value to 5. Flow controls the amount of force our curve exerts from start point to the end point, so the fluid will move faster than the curve. We reset, bake again, and this looks better. Let's do a test increasing the resolution to 350, reset and bake again. With this resolution increases simulation time per frame, and yet the look seems similar. By changing the resolution, we also change the behavior of the fluid, so we have to decide which resolution best suits our needs. I have decided for now that 200 is enough for the final simulation of the scene. There is something I don't like. Our fluid, when emitted, seems very flat. We want it to emit a little more organically. We select the meter, enter edit mode, subdivide the faces, and exit edit mode. We add a displace modifier and create a new cloud texture with 0.01 on size. Back to modifiers tab, we select global under coordinates, so it looks like the noise is animated. We set intensity to 0.7, medium level to 0.623, and again reset and bake. The result is acceptable, so we'll leave it by now. Let's go with second scene. The first thing is to change the cache of our simulation, otherwise we will lose the previous one. Click on the plus symbol to create a new sequential folder, or create it manually. As soon as we move the timeline, the previous simulation disappears, as is logical, since there is still no data in the new folder. Right now, if we look at grid info, we see the size and resolution for the main. But if we change its size, its resolution will also change. If we want to always keep the same resolution, we can activate lock voxel size, and so flip fluids automatically change the resolution. We set the start and end frames to 200 and 399 respectively. And we need to remove all the objects linked to flip fluids to add those from the second scene. In the sidebar, in Select Objects, we click Obstacles, and in Add Objects, we click Eliminate. Now we select Inflows, Delete, select Forces, and Delete. We select these two objects, which will act as obstacles, and duplicate them. We move them to Second Scene Collection, and press Slash on the numpad to hide the rest of the objects. We create a new cube, scale it, move it around here, Select this object and add a boolean modifier to it. We select the cube, we select intersection, and if this happens, we select fast and apply the modifier. We select the cube, scale it and move it around here roughly, select the other object and repeat the process. We remove the cube, add a decimate modifier with a ratio of 0.5 to both objects and apply them. We select both objects, in the sidebar, click Obstacles, go to Dynamic Properties, change friction to 0.7, and copy the value to the other object. We select second emitter, select Inflow in sidebar, 
and select our domain. We set 190 in initial frame because we want the simulation to start before the shot. As it will start earlier, we have to temporarily move the first two domain keyframes and we reset and bake. Obviously, there is no force field, but before that, I want you to see the shot that made me reconsider the whole simulation process. Let's take a closer look at it and imagine the shape the meteor will have. It is clearly seen and it looks like a snake, but sorta, as so having to animate each meteor by hand is a bit boring. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, my first thought, right off the bat, using curves. We create a new curve, enter edit mode, select all the vertices and delete them. We select draw tool, draw the curve, adjust it if necessary and exit edit mode. We go to object properties, under bevel, set depth to 0.1 and just below that we have start and end mapping. We can animate the end position for curve and it looks like a snake moving. Cool! We just need to add keyframes in the timeline. We go to frame 190, set 0 to end and add keyframe. Now go to frame 191, set 0 to start and add another keyframe. We go to 272, set 1 to end, add another keyframe. We go to 273, set start to 1 and add another keyframe. We select the four keyframes, right click and convert the handles to vector. We select the two start keyframes and drag them to frame 212. But we have a problem. Flip fluids can only use geometry to generate fluid, and this is a curve. Well, we can convert it to geometry, but no, because that way we lose the animation of the curve. And linking an object to the curve? Also, the movement will not be organic. That's it our beloved geometry nodes, GN onwards. First, we are going to change the name of our curve to FFSCN2AM01. Create a new node tree and rename it same. Now we insert a joint geometry node, add a resample curve node, set it to 46 and connect our curve to it. We connect to a trim curve node, we connect to a set curve radius node, we connect to a curve to mesh node and we connect to joint geometry. But what happens? It is not curve, of course, it is geometry, because we have beveled it. We set depth to zero, and back in GN the error disappears. We change the radius to 0.2, and to finish we connect to a curved circle, and thus we define the profile of our curve. We give it 32 in resolution, 0.1 in radius, and select fill caps. Now if we create keyframes to end value of string curve node, we have the same animation as before. At first we are going to give more shape to the meter, so connect the radius of set curve radius to a float curve node and connect value to factor of a spline parameter node. The shape of the curve depends on our float curve. We leave it more or less like this, but we still have a curve, after all. Another option, perhaps, will be to add this node tree to another object directly. Let's try it. We create a new curve create a new node tree, assign a meter 1 to it and disable the curve. We disconnect the input group, drag the curve to our node tree and connect geometry to resemble curve. Now we need to copy start and end keyframes to our node and add our curve to flip fluids. We remove flip fluids from a meter 2 and if we reset and bake, now it works. Maybe it's a bug in Blender, or maybe it's fit fluids, but after changing something to the meter, everything seems to be fine while simulating, but it's not actually creating any fluid. So if we stop the simulation, reset and bake again, seems to work fine. But we still lose the animation. What if we tell fit fluids to cast the animation of this object before the simulation? Supposedly it works for bones animations, but it doesn't say anything about GN. It gives us an error. Animated geometries have to have the same topology, always the same number of vertices. And it tells us that we can disable this warning. We go to Flip Fluids Advanced Settings, activate Disable Changing Topology Warning, and Bake. There it is. It's important to note that every time we change any setting in the meter, we will have to activate Force Export on XBake to update the animation. We go back to layout, rename the curve to FFSCN2FO01 
and remove the modifier. Let's use the same curve, adding flip fluids as force field and setting flow to 8. Let's try again, reset and bake. Back in GN, and since we're going to use these nodes more times, instead of duplicating them each time, we're going to create a group with them. We select them, duplicate them up here, press Ctrl E, drag object to a new input, drop count to another input, and rename it to resolution 1. We drag resolution to another input, rename it to resolution 2, drag radius and rename it to scale, we drag start and end to new inputs, add a new switch at the end, drag it to a new input, press tab to go out of the group and rename it as FF emitter 01. We have to recreate the keyframes at start and end values, so I duplicated the objects earlier, just copy the settings and remove the extra nodes. I forget to add an output to our group, so go inside, connect switch node to the output and remove this join geometry. Exit the group and connect it to your join geometry. We need another meter, so we create a new curve, we enter edit mode, select all the vertices, delete them, draw the curve to our liking and exit edit mode. Now rename the new curve to ffscn 2 fo 2 and put both curves in the second scene collection if they are not already. We add flip fluids to it, select force field and set flow to 8. We rename our cube to ffscn 2 am 1 and duplicate the node group. Connect it to join geometry, we change object to ffscn 2 fo 2 and create keyframes to start and end values. And again, reset and bake. I don't like how the fluid takes the shape of the curve, so we select it, change the traction strength to minus 1 and flow to 4. Now we select the obstacle and change friction to 0.3. Since we haven't changed anything that affects the first meter, we can continue the simulation starting at frame 286. Much better. Let's go with the last scene. So change the start frame to 400 and end frame to 600. I want our fluid to start here and split it into 6. We've already seen how to do that, so I'm not going to show it. We have the obstacles with low resolution, we have the curves, and we have a cube with our node 3 duplicated. It will be something like this. 6 meters, each with its curve. All curves have minus 2 in attraction strength and 5 in flow. Now is when things get complicated. I have loaded the viscosity of this simulation for clarity, and this is the result. Each curve has its own gravity and since they are close to each other, it forces a setup. So in the end, I decided to make each meter separately, in different caches. We disable our forces except the first. In GN, the first thing is to change the input of our switch nodes, and we deactivate all but the first one. We create a new cache folder for the first emitter and simulate the scene. We disable the first curve, we enable the second curve, we deactivate the first emitter and we activate the second emitter. We create a cache folder for the second emitter, simulate it and repeat the process for the rest. And now a question arises. If we can only select one cache folder in the domain, how do we render it? We can export each emitter to Lampac files and import them into our project. We are going to select the cache of the first scene and we are going to move the keyframes back to their original position. We select 0 in start frame and 199 in final frame, select the fluid and press File, Export, Alembic. We create a new folder called FFBlood and enter it. We select Flatten Hierarchy, Selected Objects and name it HOTD SCN1 1 for example. We change the frames to 200 and 399, select the cache of the second scene, export it, and repeat the process with the rest of the caches. We create a new collection called FFBlood, select it and press File, Import, Alembic. We select the first one, uncheck the fine frame range, and import. It only remains to do the same with the rest of the files, and we will already have all the fluids together. 
Obviously, it does not have the same appearance as the original. My intention is to show the workflow that I follow. There are certain places where the fluid has to go up a wall or is finishing down, where more fluid is concentrated. We can avoid it by cutting the curves with force field and applying different values to flow, so that to be more intense on those places. We can also add small curves with a lower value in flow at those points. In the first scene, we added a displace modifier to the meter. We could do the same with the fluids, a little less intense, to get a more chaotic look. In fact, we can do it with GN being able to animate the texture as you see here. I hope it has been helpful. Leave your comments and see you soon.